Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to go over some things you can do with the Flask command line interface. So in all my Flask videos, I use different parts of the CLI, but I never talk about them explicitly. So I just wanted to go over some of the things I do in this video and explain what they're doing and how they work. So the first thing is I have a virtual environment set up already, but it has nothing installed. So first thing I'll do is I'll type the word Flask here. And you see that it says it can't find command Flask. And that's because I need to install it. And when I install it, I'll have this flask command line program available the flask shell is part of that so pip install flask and now that it's installed i can do flask here and now it gives me the help information so it basically uh, tells me what things i can do with it um, it tells me that i can't find the flask app because i haven't created that part yet um, but this is the tool that i'll be using so this is the flask command line tool and the first thing i want to do is I want to set it up to where I can create configuration files for Flask. So to do that, I need to install a library called python.env. So let me install it, python-env. I'll install that quickly, and then I can create a Flask environment configuration file. So it needs to be .flask env, all one word. And then inside of here, uh, what I can do is I can do like flask underscore debug equals one. So it's always going to start with the word flask and then some value. So this is basically turning on debug mode. So if I go to my command line here and I do flask run, we see I get this error. It says that it cannot locate a flask application. So let me go ahead and create a flask application. So by default, it's going to look for either a wsgi.py file or an app.py. So let me go ahead and create app.py. And then in here, I'm going to create a very simple Flask app. But before I do that, let me actually run this so we can see the uh, different error. So this time it says it failed to find the Flask application or a factory in module app. So it finds the file, but it doesn't find anything in here. So let me go ahead and create the, uh, the basics of the Flask application. So from Flask, import Flask, and then app equals Flask dunder name so this is the minimal flask app this won't do anything but at least i can do flask run now and we see that it turns on so if i were to navigate here i just get a 404 because i have no routes to find but as we can see it turns on and if i wanted to do this even better i can create the application factory pattern so just create a create app function put the app equals flask dunder name in there and then return app so if I save that, it automatically restarts because it's in debug mode, but it still works. Like if I were to do something like this, if I change this to create apps and run it, it fails because it's looking specifically for the function create app. So that's the, the pattern in here. So I'll do flask run again, and we see it turns on. So you're not always going to have an app.py or a wsgi.py file. Uh, oftentimes, you'll see it named run.py as an example. So what I'll do is I'll change the name to run.py. So now it's run.py, and if I do flask run, it can no longer find it. So what I can do is I can go back to my flask env file, and I can do flask underscore app equals, and then the name of the module, so the name of the file without the .py. So it's just run here. So now when I do flask run, we see that the app starts up again. And this run.py is pretty useful when you want to create a folder that has everything in your app. So what I'll do is I'll create a folder called project. And inside of project, I will create a dunder init.py file. And I'll copy everything from run.py over into dunder init. And now if I do this, it returns the same error uh, where it can't find the flask app. That's because it's still looking at run. And what I need to do inside of run is import from project. So I can say from project import create app, right? And now I should be able to run this, right? Because it's looking for the create app function. It's there now because I imported it. I don't have to call it myself. Uh, I could do something like this. I can do app equals create app. Like this is fine, it's the same thing, but you don't need to call this uh, directly. It's just looking for either app or create app to start the Flask app. Okay, so that's the basics of uh, getting things started. So now let's go to the Dunder init and let's add a couple of routes. So I'm gonna do one route here and I'm gonna call this admin. And I'm just going to return hello admin. I'm not gonna actually go to this in the browser. And then I'll create another one called 
main. So main here and it will return hello main. Or how about hello world? Okay, so I have two routes to find in here. And what I can do is I can do flask routes instead of flask run. And what it's going to do, it's going to list all of the routes that are in my app. So we see admin here, slash admin, slash main. And then we also have slash static uh, because that's enabled by default. So if I have some static files, it will automatically load those static files for this particular endpoint. But since I don't have any static files, it doesn't matter, but it's just there. So no matter how many routes you have, you can easily see all the routes that you have here by doing flask routes. If I were to change something instead of main, it's mains, uh, we see that it's updated immediately. Like it's main with an S here, whereas this has no S. So Flask routes is pretty useful, especially like when you're taking over a project and you wanna quickly see all the routes that are there, uh, you can just do Flask routes. So another thing you can do is you can create custom commands. So to create custom commands, uh, you can go here and then use the app object. So add app, just like you're creating a route, but instead of routes, you're gonna do dot CLI dot command. And you give it a name. So let's say create. So in here, you define a function just like a route and then you do something in that function. So here uh, I'll say create command has run. Right, so now what I can do is I can do flask create and we see create command has run. So if you ever wanna do something like outside of the running app, uh, you wanna have it as a command, like maybe you wanna set up some initial data or run some kind of process, uh, you can create a command line function here that you can then call by using flask and then whatever the name is that you create. So here I put create as the name, but this can be uh, anything that you want. So now let me show you uh, something with SQL Alchemy. So let me install it first. So Flask um, SQL Alchemy is what I'm installing. And let me go ahead and set it up. So from Flask underscore SQL Alchemy, uh, we're gonna import the SQL Alchemy class. Uh, I'll instantiate it. So DB equals SQL Alchemy there. And then inside of the create app function, I'll do DB init app and then I'll pass the app object. I need to add some configuration for the database. So I'll say SQL Alchemy database URI, and this is gonna be equal to uh, SQLite, and then uh, db.sqlite3 is a typical name. And then what I wanna do is I want to create a user class. So here I'll create a class called user. It's going to inherit from db.model. And I'll create two columns. One is going to be the ID column, so db.integer, uh, for the ID column, and then I'll have a name column. So this will be a string, let's say up to 50 characters. So now I wanna go into the Flask shell. So if I type Flask shell here, it brings up this shell instance. So there's REPL, and then I can do certain things in here. But the nice thing is, is that the DB object is already here. So if I type DB, it's there. And also the user class is already here. So if I wanted to create the initial version of my database, I can simply do db.create underscore all, and then it creates the instance folder and it creates the db.sqlite3 file in it, and then the, that should also have the user table in it. And if I wanna create a new user, I can say something like user equals user uh, name equals Anthony, right? And then I can do db.session.add user, and then db.session.commit. Right, so let me get out of this and let me open up the database. So db.sqlite3, and if I just select star from user, we should see the one user there, user ID one with the name Anthony. So you saw with the Flask shell, I was able to easily create something in the database uh, without having to uh, import anything. Just run Flask shell and immediately start doing what needs to be done to create uh, something in the database. So for all of your models, they'll automatically be loaded in there, assuming uh, your project is set up properly, like everything imports into uh, places that are used, and then you'll be able to create records in the database from that Flask shell. So next what I want to show you is I wanted to show um, the options for Flask Run. So let's go back to that. If I do Flask Run dash dash help, it explains what it does and then it shows some options. So we have a debug mode, we have like a host and a port, um, a cert, a key, a reload and so on. So the thing about this is you take a configuration name that you're interested in, let's say port, so P-O-R-T, 
And what you can do is you can specify that in your Flask ENV file, right? So if I go to Flask ENV, I can do Flask, and then because this is run, I'm gonna do run, and then port. So if I wanted this to be key, I can do key or cert or host, uh, but I'm just doing port. So for the port, I wanna say one, two, three, four, five, right? So it's the same, I can do with threads, exclude patterns or whatever in this Flask ENV. So now when I do Flask run, we see that it is running on port 12345 instead of the default port of 5000. I can do the same thing with the host, flask run host equals 0000, and then restart the server, and now we see that it's running on all addresses here. It looks a little bit different, and we see that it still has the same port. So I encourage you to look at uh, flask dash dash help to see what's available there. Like we see the create that I just added. We see routes run and shell, which I demonstrate in this video. Um, there are some options here, but as you can see, the flask ENV can uh, do that for you. So the flask app, you can do like flask ENV file, you can do flask version and so on. And you can do flask debug as we saw. And then with routes, flask routes dash dash help, this probably doesn't have much, but you can see some options here, flask shell dash dash help. So I encourage you to look at these. Uh, as you can see, flask shell doesn't do much, uh, but flask run dash dash help is probably the one you'll look at the most. So that's all I want to show you. I just wanted to show you how to use the Flask command line tool. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I've done in here, feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, let me know if you actually uh, use some of the features of the Flask command line tool instead of just using like Flask run. I know some people still use like Python and run.py, but you definitely should be using like Flask run if you're gonna start up a Flask app in a development environment at least. Uh, so that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.